Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we are finally getting to return to the world of Red Rising with Pierce Brown's latest book, Lightbringer. And as you can also probably see, this is going to be a non-spoiler review for the book. I do have a spoiler review coming out later, but if you guys want to go into the book without any spoilers, this is the video for you guys. So with all that out of the way, let's get started. So, Lightbringer takes place a couple of months after the end of Dark Age, after Darrow and the others have been forced into hiding after Lysander took Mercury at the end of that book. So, everyone's licking their wounds, trying to figure out what's going on, as Atalantia and Lysander start to make their final push for the core. Not everything's going as planned, as Lysander is now starting to put his final plans into motion to take down Atalantia and to take the morning share for himself and seek justice for what happened to his parents. After he learned the truth at the end of Dark Age. In order for Lysander to fully take the throne, he has to ally with a very shadowy figure who is extremely dangerous and Lysander has a lot of trepidation for working with this person but is fully willing to because he truly believes that he is the right person to lead the remnant of the core into a new glorious age. At the same time, Darrow, Cassius, and Severo are licking their wounds trying to seek help in the fight against the core to help fight to free Mars from Atalantia and her army. As everyone gets ready for the final battle which will take place presumably from the next book in Red God. The best part of this book is its character development. Cassius, Darrow, and Lysander go through really big character arcs, but the biggest character arcs are given to Darrow and Lysander throughout the entire book, and in my spoiler review, I will get into a couple of specific things that the book does. Darrow goes through this absolute odyssey of a character development journey, which culminates in this epic fight, and him finally becoming a different man at the very end of this story, and I just love the character development that Pierce Brown gave Darrow. At least to me, this is probably the book where Darrow gets the most character development and arguably the best character development. This to me is his best character development arc. Another thing the book does that really surprised me was make me sympathetic for Lysander because if you guys have seen my other Lysander Alun video, you know I absolutely hate the kid. I hate this character with a burning passion. Surprisingly, Pierce Brown was able to make me empathize with him a little bit. Not entirely, I still think he's not a good person, but Pierce Brown was still able to make me care about him as he goes through this journey and realize even though he's so committed to what he's doing, he still has his own internal doubts, but even despite those doubts, he's still willing to keep going forward with his mission. Kudos to Pierce Brown for making me care about Lysander as much as I did through this book, even though I still hate the character's guts. There's no way Pierce Brown could ever make me legitimately like this character, but he did push me toward being a little less critical of Lysander in this book at least. We have to absolutely talk about the ending because it absolutely shattered me emotionally. It just was such a good finale with a lot of catharsis through two really important character arcs and such a good ending that it just leaves you shook. And I'll talk more specifically about the ending in my spoiler review, but as for right now, I absolutely in loved the ending. It just made me ready for Red God so much, and I cannot wait to see what Pierce Brown has planned for this book. Because Severo, Cassius, and Darrow spend so much time together, we get some awesome interactions, and it kind of makes you realize just how much we missed out on, and Darrow even says it. Cassius and Darrow let 10 years go by when they should have been fighting side by side together, and we finally really see the three of them working together, riffing off each other. There are some really cool comedic bits. There's a lot of really emotional bits too, and it's just such a cool thing to just see the three of them working together so much as it should have been. I love the three of them, and this to me at least is my personal golden trio. Cassius, Darrow, and Severo, and I am so into it. And I just love the three of these characters and all of their interactions they had throughout the book. Final thoughts on Lightbringer here. As you can probably tell, I absolutely love the Lightbringer. It was such a good entry into the series. It 
again, continued what I loved about Red Rising, gave us some really good character development, quite a lot of shock moments. All around, it was a solid entry into the series, and the way that this book is written, it's clearly written as a setup book. Like, it's setting a lot of the dominoes up for Red God to finally knock down and finish the series in its entirety. But even despite that, this is still a solid book book and I again cannot wait to see what Pierce Brown has planned for the finale. I am going to be giving Pierce Brown's Lightbringer a 10 out of 10. I know I don't give that sort of praise very often but I absolutely love this book and another solid Red Rising book and we'll have to wait for Red God to see how all this finishes out. That's going to be my non-spoiler review for Lightbringer. Please don't forget to stick around for my spoiler review of the book but I will see you guys then. Till then have a great week and don't forget keep on reading. Thank you.